Hello folks, today we'll be talking about a new feature in Power BI that is forecasting. I'll quickly show you how it works. So once you upload your Power Pivot worksheet into a Power BI site, then you can load it up and switch to an HTML5 view. And once that loads for line graphs, and as long as certain constraints are satisfied, you're going to have this this uh, dot right here and you can simply click on it and drag it to the side to forecast further and there's a lot of controls you can play with you can change the seasonality in this case I can change it to 12 months uh, you can see kind of the acceptable confidence range so one Sigma will show you kind of kind of the 95% confidence interval and you can also hindcast so to check the accuracy of the model you can drag this line back and and you can kind of compare how the model would have predicted the light blue versus the actual value and you can double click it to reset it back you also have a little more granular control of individual data points specifically if there are anomalies in the data set or one-off cases which you want to take out of consideration so you can select a, a data point in the past and just drag it to move it and the model is going to adjust accordingly and if you want to reset it you just come back to the point and double click and the model is going to reset so pretty fun to use so let's step into it and see how it's done so let's go ahead and build our file we're going to do it from scratch and I'm going to start by getting the temperature anomaly data so we're going to use Power Query for this, and I'm going to paste the URL where the data is located. It's a text file. We'll see if Power Query is able to process it. All right, so the first thing we notice is there are a lot of uh, header rows which we need to remove. So we'll do just that. Remove top rows, and we'll remove seven. Now we need to split up the column, and in this case, we're going to choose split by number of characters and this one is delimited at every five characters and we only need the first 13 columns so we'll only keep those all right nicely done now as we scroll down in the data set Oh, first thing we need to do is use this row as headers. That's easily done. Use first row as headers. Now we need to do some cleanup. If we scroll down, we notice these columns. So we're going to change null actually into a different value. And we're going to put a text value in there. And you'll see how I'm going to use that later. And next step, I'm going to transform this into a numeric data type and I can see that the null rows have errored out and now I can simply click remove errors to get rid of this and other rows that I did not need this is looking better I do have to get rid of this null column I'll just filter it out and then some more data issues there are these star asterisks entries that I need to replace so I'm going to say replace values and just blank them out. So you can see they're gone now. And now I'm going to unpivot these because I really need these as the row entry. All right, some final changes. And we're all set so we're going to load it into our data model and apply and close and this is going to send it directly to power pivot all right it's been loaded and we're going to open up the power pivot window and here you go here's our data for our second data set we'll go to gapminder.org an excellent website by Hans Rosling. 
if you haven't heard his TED talk, you must have been living under a rock. The subset we're interested in is natural disasters. So we're going to filter on that and this is the data set that we'll try to grab again using Power Query. So you can see there's droughts, effective number, epidemic and so forth. So I'm going to copy the shortcut for this and I'll go back to Power Query and I'm just going to say from web and paste the URL again. Now this you notice is a Google spreadsheet doc um, but that's no problem for Power Query. Uh, it shows me the sheets that are present. I can hover to preview the sheets. I know in this case I need the data sheet. So I'm going to select that and click edit. Now this is much cleaner. I'm going to make the first row as headers. And then I need to remove the last column which is all nulls. Now I can just unpivot these columns so that this data is in rows instead of columns. Much better. Now I'll just make some final changes. And I'll insert a column to indicate what kind of value am I storing here. In this case, is the draught affected. And I'm not going to load this into worksheet or our data model. I'm just going to store this query. So I have that first query. Now, to get the other data sets, all I'm going to do is just duplicate this and then change the settings. So I go into edit mode, but rather than editing each step, I'm going to go into the advanced editor. And I'm going to copy that into a notepad so I can easily edit it. So I paste it here, and now I'm going to grab the next data set, which is epidemic affected. And I'll paste that URL here, and I'll change this text string. And now I can copy and paste this back into Power Query. Uh oh, now it errored out, but that's just because I need to change column 41 to 40. That's the column I need to remove for this data set. And again, I'll just do some renaming and I'll store it again simply as a query. I'm not loading the data anywhere right now. And I'm going to go fast now, but I'm going to repeat the same steps to get all the other natural disaster affected numbers. Now somebody smarter than me could have probably written this in a loop. Um, there is a programming language to Power Query. Unfortunately, I'm not that skilled. Alright, so finally we have the drought, epidemic, extreme temperature, flood, storm, and tsunami. So now we can start to append these data sets. I'm going to start by selecting the first two. And from here, I can just click append queries and keep appending till I have a complete set. All right, and this one, I am going to send it to the data model since I need this in Power Pivot. Apply and close. And this has sent data to my Power Pivot sheet. You can see it right here. All right, so I've finalized our file. We have gotten the date table using this article from Power Pivot Pro, the ultimate date table revisited. Uh, it's a kick-ass way to get the date table from the Azure data market. Uh, we have done some other changes, created relationships, created formulas, and we've added the Power View sheet. On this, we're showing at the top the temperature anomaly, how it progresses over time. And at the bottom graph, we're showing number of people affected by natural disasters. Now I realize the scales on the graphs is not the same, but we'll handle, we'll deal with it later. All right, so now I've uploaded the file onto Power BI site, and the first thing I need to do is click here to switch to HTML5. Only when I've done that is the uh, forecast and feature enabled, 
And once I've done that, I have this little dot on line graphs, which I can simply drag to show me the forecasting. And once I've done that, I can see other features to my right. I can play with that. So the seasonality, the confidence interval. In this case, it's automatically detected a cycle of five units, which is probably not right. Maybe 12 uh, would be better for the kind of the annual cycle. So that looks a little better. So it shows an upward trend. Now you can show kind of the confidence range that it's predicting within. So one sigma would be within 95% confidence. And you can hindcast, so you can, you can kind of compare if you drag it back, so based on data to the point of 1988, you can see the temperature anomalies were expected to be much lower. Now I'm going to double click to reset it. Uh, so really things have gotten much worse in the recent past. All right, so I'm going to change the scale on these graphs to match both graphs. So I'm going to set it to 1970 to 2009. And once we do that, you can clearly see that see, things seem to have changed in the 80s. The temperature anomaly seems to get much worse, and the people affected by a natural disaster uh, takes a turn for the worse as well. And you can see this much better in this graph, uh, which shows by disaster type. Didn't want to end things on that sully note, so let's look at something fun. We're going to pull stock market data using a Yahoo service, which lets us export in a CSV format and we're going to pull the Microsoft stock uh, history first and I'm going to add a column to indicate the symbol and I'm not going to load it anywhere I'm just going to save it as a query for now All right, now we're going to do the same thing to pull uh, the stock quotes off a few of our friends. All right, now that I have all that, I'm just going to append that all together. So start with Microsoft and Apple, and then append Facebook. And now I'm going to send this to the data model. All right, so I've created the sheet and uploaded it to Power BI. And I'm going to click the HTML5 button to enable forecasting. And here I am. Things are looking on the up and up. Look at that, Microsoft trending up. Seems going to end close to 45 at the year end. Facebook going to hit close to 80. And Apple is headed towards 700. So that's great. Oops, uh, the seasonality, seven units, probably none. So let's fix that. So there you go, folks. Pay attention to the disclaimer. I hope you don't use it for your stock market investing. But um, hope you found this video useful and you get a chance to play with the forecasting feature yourself.